Hi, Rich. How are you? I'm well. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to take very long, but I, I just I want to get an idea of, uh, of how BP decided to come here. And, uh, and I mentioned the comprehensive plan. My, my question really has to do with, uh, with the comprehensive plan. And I think it's, I think it's important to know that uh, back in 2003, you've heard about the plan. It's a master plan. I'm sure you're, similar, you're familiar with that, whether you're in Texas, no matter where you live, it's, it's kind of a common thing. It would, the intent of that is to sort of describe the community, what the community interests are, and that kind of a thing. Back in 2003, the, the, the town and the village adopted a, a comprehensive plan, a master plan for the community. It had to do with economic growth and that type of thing. Uh, it actually got started in the process in 2000. It took a, it took a number of years. And, and by 2003, they, they formally adopted it. Now, they just didn't accept it or, or what have you, but they formally adopted it. gave it more traction, in other words. The interesting thing is, in 2003, or when they started in 2000, that was long before uh, wind came to our town and long before we had even before the leases were signed and that type of thing but I just want to I just want to point out to give you a, a feel for the kind of community this is and if, and if I'm thinking in terms of BP were going to come here they would be wanting to say okay the first thing I want to do is see their master plan and then of course I want to talk to some officials but but the vision statement for, for in that 2000 plan was to protect the integrity of Cape Vincent's small town atmosphere while allowing for compatible residential growth and economic commercial growth. So you can see it was geared toward a small community, a rural community, and that type of thing. Uh, and it, it went through various parts of uh, the, the town and describing and breaking out into different zones. There's an internal section that we call the agricultural residential section where actually most of your, your project is, is, uh, is scheduled to be developed. And, and what that plan said back in 2003, before you folks came to town, was uh, what they wanted to enhance and, uh, and, uh, and support was agriculture in that section. And it said to develop development that has minimum impact on uh, the important resources such as scenic views, vistas, working landscapes, and tourism assets. Now, this was before you guys came to town. It also said what to discourage. And, and it said location of towers, prisons, utility facilities where the impact would have a negative impact on scenic vistas and tourism assets. So I mean, you, it, it's a quite a clear state. So the, the, the thing I'm interested in, I think a lot of people are, is what, what prompted wind companies to come here when you know that this is a small town, small town atmosphere, you have very clear stuff in which you're saying, hey, what we really want to do with, the, with our agriculture is leave it alone, we don't want towers. How could you possibly come in here and at that time when you first came in, you had a project of 100 turbines, it was 95 at the time, but it's similar to what you have right now, of uh, the equivalent of 140 story buildings in, our, in, a in a town that wants to maintain a small atmosphere. How, do, how did you come to do that? I mean, uh, do, you, do you even think that that really is compatible with, with the kind of community that was described back there in 2003? Right, so I mean, uh, I, 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 the question you're asking is of me personally. I, I was not involved with the original siting of this project in this area. Okay, well, so, well, let's move it ahead to now. Sure. Uh, now you come in and you've got 100 and, uh, 124 turbines, yep. you know, which is even more so. It's, a, it's more impact. And, and so you still, we still have that same vision, that same vision of the small town and the small commercial nature. We also have those same sort of sense about what we want to do with the interior. So the project you're proposing really is, do you, do you think that's compatible to, to, the, to, the, to the kind of description we have in that master plan? Would you say that the development you have right here is compatible with a community that wants to maintain a small town atmosphere? Uh, I do. I do believe the, the project offers uh, the opportunity to be both compatible with um, allowing for wind power generation as well as maintaining the ability to continue uh, agricultural activities and a small town feel. Again, this is not the first project that we've pursued. Um, there are other small towns across the U.S. and in New York that have hosted wind turbine sites, mm -hmm. uh, have not had um, detrimental effects that uh, some may have thought might be the case, uh, we absolutely continue to believe that. Um, there, there is great wind resource here in Cape Vincent, as you know all too well, you live here, you know, you know the, the power the of the wind here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we believe that we offer the opportunity to bring significant environmental and economic benefits to the town, both in the form of uh, leasehold payments as well as uh, any kind of um, payments we might make in, in, uh, in move taxes. Well, you know, you, you indicated a discussion about, you said you looked at your own internal controls. You know, and we, uh, we took a look at uh, your uh, posted websites. You, you have 13 wind farms. And you took a look at that. And in terms of internally, when I look at those 
those wind farms that you've had, I, in other words, I found out where they were in Colorado and, uh, and Texas and what have you, did the little Google Earth thing where I was flying over your, uh, your, uh, your wind farms out there. And internally, it looks as though you have the, you have the same notion about your plans. I mean, internally, uh, this town and this setup and this plan really is, is in contrast and incompatible with the kinds of things you've done everywhere else. Um, I mean, this, this, I mean, you don't have any other place. I looked at all those things, and, and you know, you've got uh, miles between turbines and and, uh, and 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 homes and residences. You don't have any wind farm where you have it right next to a tourism-based economy, to the, to a major area of the of the regional state that, that that draws tourism and everything else. You haven't got anything. So why did you come here? Again, we, we can talk about the setbacks that we've used in developing the layout here, from looking at roadways to looking at. Um, Residences, looking at um, uh, you know property lines of, of of parties who are and are not participating in the project. We we can talk all about those kinds of details, all of which I again I would I, I'd reiterate are mm -hmm. either at or above our own internal standards and certainly at or above industry standards for building wind turbine mm -hmm. projects, mm -hmm. uh, and this is both for proposed and operational projects. Yeah. Okay. And and, and I understand that. You know, you say in a, in a sense that, that that really is compatible, but uh, you've also said here that you're trying to be responsive to what we are putting forward, and from my personal point of view, I said it's not compatible. Uh, what you propose is not compatible with uh, what this community stands for. And I got one uh, one last comment, and that is the advertising. You mentioned the advertising where, you you know, we, we, we've seen these ads. I don't think they're very helpful. And, and, uh, and, and one thing in particular is how can you be pushing, you, you're normally pushing the economic deal with it, in other words, the money that's going to come back to communities. In all essence, that's all based on an assumption that you're going to get a, uh, a pilot agreement that really was when they initially set it up, and we have a, a legislator here right here that said, in effect, that this wasn't to be used for anything else other than glue. So you really can't really be talking about any kind of financial stuff, particularly putting an ad in the paper, talking about financial stuff, when you really haven't even set, even begun the, the discussion of, uh, of the arrangements and agreements that are required for all the taxing authorities to do that. So my suggestion there would be, you know, lay low on the advertising. Don't stress anything in economics until you get to that point. And the other thing is take home the message that this is a small community and what you got up there is incompatible with what we stand for. Thanks. Thank you for your feedback.